I can remember as a kid collecting comic books. I would read book after book. Whenever I picked up the latest comics, they'd demand my attention for hours. I used to think, if only the real world was fun and cool like that. Then, wait a minute, is that a 12 cent Spider-Man? That might be worth a few bucks. Anyway, then came those video game arcades that hit like a tsunami in the early 70s and late 80s. You now had live interaction to combine with those colorful images. Not only that, you had an excuse to get out and socialize. Soon after, by the mid to late 80s, portable video game consoles began to overtake the more bulkier arcade machines. This chain of events put the gaming revolution in full effect. What many failed to realize, including myself, was that all of this was by design. These video games are designed to garner our full attention and participation for as long as humanly possible. The rewards, the scoring and point systems, the competition, the levels, the euphoric high of achievement to the gut-wrenching trauma of losing has been methodically researched and implemented to serve one purpose, to get you and your hard-earned cash to part ways over and over again, to the tune of $60 billion a year. We are businessmen. Gamification is the term used to exemplify placing these mechanics of gaming into non-game activities that change people's behavior. This use of game thinking alongside game mechanics can be utilized to engage people or solve problems. When used in a business context, gamification is the process of integrating game dynamics and game mechanics into a website, business service, online community, content portal, or marketing campaign in order to drive participation and engagement. While no one has identified with certainty who first coined the term gamification, it is believed to have formed in the social gaming circles of 2005. Tim Chang, a venture capitalist with Norwest Venture Partners, is credited by some with the initial use of the term. Gamification is also known by the terms funware, nonfiction gaming, and pleasure marketing. Although widely considered an intermediate technology, social gaming platforms gained prominence from 2005 to 2007. Rajat Paharia, the founder of Bunchball, is credited with releasing the industry's first gamification platform in 2007, entitled Nitro. Today, there are over a dozen such platform vendors. It is through vendors such as these that the game mechanics are packaged as off-the-shelf solutions for business integration. Gamification software can be implemented into a website or app by way of licensing a third-party engine, an application programming interface, or a widget. Many individuals today are beginning to articulate their methods of gamification. These methods work off of the rationalization that anything you spend time on must be worthwhile and therefore valuable. In other words, gamification appeals to our fundamental needs and desires. For example, one such desire is that of status. Status is what drives loyalty and firms establish loyalty programs on the fact that people will respond to incentives. Game designers have known for years how to address these needs and desires and are doing so through gamification. Game designers have known for years how to incent and motivate player behavior, and they do it by using things like points and levels and virtual goods and high score tables and badges. Some game designers have been known to study behavior models and personality profiles to try and further understand why people are motivated to play games. Jesse Shell, a professor at Carnegie Mellon University's Entertainment Technology Center and founder of Shell Games, is an advocate of Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs model. As a result, his art of game design chart serves as a blueprint for successful game creation. Jay McMonagall, director at the Institute for the Future and author of Reality is Broken, believes that if people worldwide could play more, not less, in the right game scenarios, their experience could help solve some of the world's biggest problems like hunger, poverty, and global conflict. It was gamification leaders such as McGonagall and Pahari, among others, that spoke alongside gamification pioneer Gabe Zickerman at the first gamification summit held in San Francisco in January of 2011. Zickerman, who serves as chairman, organized the event to promote gamification and provide networking opportunities for game designers and firms. It's always time for games. Video games are the answer to everything. Many companies today are using the process of gamification when trying to market their brand and products to the consumer. Nike launched a new gaming marketing plan by teaming with Apple's iPod. The world's largest manufacturer of athletic footwear and apparel worldwide has gamified exercise with the launch of Nike Plus in 2008. 
The Nike software loaded on the iPod will reward users who reach certain levels of milestones. Nike has turned a mundane routine like exercising into a game that people can now enjoy. By launching Nike Plus, users of the game will push harder and longer to reach these milestones in an attempt to achieve more points, levels, and rewards. Another example of a gamified system would be Starbucks' use of the game Foursquare as a promotion tool. The coffee chain rewards users with virtual points and virtual badges for visiting their store. These badges and points are worthless outside of Starbucks, but still make the products being offered attractive to consumers. Starbucks is using gamification to get more people to visit their stores and buy more products. Another illustration of gamification would be LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a social networking company that caters to the professional community. Like many other social networks being used today for a variety of things, LinkedIn uses the web to connect with millions of other like-minded people. However, unlike other social sites, LinkedIn uses a progress bar which tracks a profile's progress. LinkedIn has taken the users back to a time when percentage points were the most important thing in their lives. LinkedIn wants you to provide as much data as possible so they show you a progress bar that gives you a percentage of completeness. The gamification firm Scavenger was tapped by restaurant chain Buffalo Wild Wings to integrate their level up promotion. Leveling up is a gaming term that gives more prizes to consumers as they ascend to new levels of use. Buffalo Wild Wings uses Scavenger in their marketing plans by offering more discounts the more consumer uses the Scavenger site. Probably one of the most well-known examples of brand recognition associated with the use of gamification would be Weight Watchers. In this interview, Gabe Zickerman shares an interesting perspective. A good example of gamification that you know, many people uh, have been exposed to is Weight Watchers, and it's really an interesting example. Weight Watchers uses many of the techniques of social games, points, badges, levels, challenges, rewards, to get users from point A, where they are today with their weight, to point B, which is where they would like to be, that is typically slimmer. What's really interesting about Weight Watchers is that they understand very clearly people's personal journeys, their desire to get you know, uh, to mastery of a particular area of their lives. And by designing a system that people can follow, they create a really unique association when the user's been successful. And I'll give you an example. If you run into somebody on the street and you say, oh my God, you look fantastic, how'd you do it? They say, Weight Watchers. They don't say, I ate right and exercised, which is what they actually did. But their conclusion, their worldview, is that they're aligned with the system they followed instead of the actions they took. And that's an opportunity for every brand and frankly for every cause to take the systems and the processes that people want to follow in order to make change in their lives that's for the better, turn that into a process that they can, they can actually follow, reward them along the way. And when they get there, they will be forever aligned with the brand, service, product, or idea that got them there. Gamification is an effective marketing tool that is becoming more prevalent in the business world today. Gartner, the leading information technology research and advisory firm, says that by 2015, more than 50% of organizations that manage innovation processes will gamify those processes. By 2014, a gamified service for consumer goods marketing and customer retention will become as important as Facebook, eBay, or Amazon, and more than 70% of Global 2000 organizations will have at least one gamified application. Wanda Maloney, founder of M2 Research, predicts that gamification will generate $1.6 billion in revenue by 2015. The goals of gamification are to achieve higher levels of engagement, change behaviors, and stimulate innovation. The opportunities for businesses are great, from having more engaged customers to crowdsourcing innovation or improving employee performance. Gardner identified four principal means of driving engagement using gamification. In the real world, feedback loops are slow, with long periods between milestones. Gamification increases the velocity of feedback loops to maintain engagement. In the real world, where goals are fuzzy and rules selectively applied, gamification provides clear goals and well-defined rules of play to ensure players feel empowered to achieve goals. While real-world activities are rarely compelling, gamification builds a narrative that engages players to participate and achieve the goals of the activity. While there is no shortage of challenges in the real world, they tend to be large and long-term. 
Gamification provides many short-term achievable goals to maintain engagement. Where games were once used as a way of escaping reality, the technology of gamification seeks to combine fantasy with reality.